What's good with the veterans, military? Hey, y'all know what time it is. Today we're gonna be talking about VA disability claims process. Why y'all be fucking this shit up for the rest of us? Nah, nah, really, just you, you yourself, and yeah. Hey, let's get into it. Ah! So first of all, hey, the way veterans fuck up their claim is going in not understanding anything whatsoever about the VA claims process. What do you mean, Debo? What are you talking about? Well, you got veterans getting out the military. You know, hey, I get it. I get it. Or, you know, long-term veterans. They've been outside of the military for a couple of years now. And they say, okay, hey, fuck it. Let me just put in the claim. But some of the things that they're missing is a diagnosis. You 100%, you're going to need a diagnosis if you're trying to get service connected for anything. I've seen many, many times a day. Veterans coming out to me like, what's up, Debo? A, I just got to die for my PTSD claim. Why is that? Now, take a look at their decision letter. And I was like, okay, medical evidence that they provided. Yeah, it's cool that you've been seeking treatment for the last five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be. You got medication. You got your symptoms recorded. You got everything possibly needed. However, for PTSD, they're missing a diagnosis. They're also missing their stressor, you know. Most of these veterans are going through VA medical facilities. Yeah, I get it. It's hard and sometimes almost impossible to have one of those VA doctors render an actual diagnosis. How do you combat this? Complain, complain about it. Talk to that doctor. If they're not, if they're not being compliant, not compliant, but you know, if they're not listening to you, if they're not helping you, talk to their immediate supervisor. Go to patient advocacy. See if you can seek Community care. If all you have is VA medical, go the community care route. Those civilian therapists and civilian doctors are going to be a lot more forthcoming, a lot more nice, a lot more easy to approach and deal with than some of these VA doctors. If you got, if you're working and you have private medical insurance available through your employment, take that route. Hey, you can you can get treatment from the VA, 10 years, 15 years, whatever the case may be. But if you're trying to put in a claim. You need a diagnosis. And if you haven't gotten that yet from a VA provider, VA doctor, you definitely gonna need to go, okay, start complaining. You gotta take a route. You just can't sit there expecting the VA to help you, you know, regardless if you're at the VA medical, definitely not in the VA claims process, not giving us the benefit of the doubt. So you definitely gotta mind your P's and Q's. Secondly, medical evidence. You know, some vets have more than enough medical evidence to establish service connection and or get that increase that they're seeking, and as some do not. However, the way medical evidence works, if you're trying to go for an increase for mental health, let's take that for example, you got to show how your symptoms have worsened and how, what are some increased impacts to your personal and your work life since being service connected for mental health or since your last CMP exam. This is what the VA is looking at. You just can't go in there and be like, okay, yeah, you've been, go, you've been seeking your treatment. You've been going to your therapist, taking your medication. However, maybe that therapist is not recording data down. Maybe you're not talking enough. You're not expressing yourself more, you know, to, to, a, to a specific point where this therapist is going to be writing all this stuff down, putting it inside of your medical record, your treatment notes, so you can in turn utilize that for a VA disability claim. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Next one is veterans. Submitting claims with the wrong documentation. You know, I see many veterans try going for an increase. Okay, they may have done one claim. They got 80% off their first claim. They waited a couple of years, decided they want to take that 100% path to righteousness. And then they don't get a VSO. They don't understand what paperwork they need. They file the wrong paperwork. I've seen many veterans submit like five things on the wrong documentation. And the VA denies that claim. Oh, sorry. Sorry, bud, you gotta reapply. Why? Oh, so I waited nine months because I submitted the wrong paperwork when it could have easily just been corrected. You know, some veterans, they get lucky. Maybe that vet, that veteran service representative or VA raider, they'll contact them, or that claim specialist, they'll contact them like, hey, what's up, motherfucking vet Debo? You submitted the wrong claim. Can you, you know, you submitted the wrong document for this claim. Can you resubmit? you know, prior to this claim being denied. Okay, yeah, hell yeah, dog. Hey, but during this current time, there's a lot of PACT Act related claims. There's a lot of denied VA claims going up for supplemental. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds? I think it's hundreds of thousands. I think it's, okay, I think it's like, you know, like 200, 300,000 
um, Board of Veteran Appeals, not including higher level review claims that are currently being processed. You got active duty military transitioning out of the military. So you have all these different type of claims being pushed into the system. And here you come along with bare minimum medical evidence, no diagnosis, don't understand the VA claims process. You submit a claim, you, you're gonna wait months. And then you may get called in for a CMP exam. You may not. You may just get 100% denied off the rip. You know, I've seen many veterans that get denied within two weeks because they didn't supply the right and correct medical evidence, diagnosis, paperwork. And I've seen some vets say wait nine months, 12 months and get that denied letter. And then they're just really fucking salty with the VA claims process. I get it. But you got to know to understand, you got to understand bare minimum. You know, this is why veterans military too, y'all fucking this shit up. So don't be mad at the VA for denying that claim or pushing that claim back to you because you submitted it wrong. That's why you either need to get educated or get with someone, a person, not, you know, not me, you know, you know, I'm willing to help always, but I always recommend for veterans to have a veteran service organization with a de designated veteran service officer Representing them whenever they submit that claim whether you're going from fucking 10 to 100 70 to 80 You know, whatever the case may be it's always better to have an organization represent you Submit that claim because it looks a lot better and it makes it seems like it makes it a lot harder for the VA to, to deny it because More than likely that veteran service organization they understand the, obviously they understand the VA claims process They know what to look for they know what the VA should be looking for as well as they can like spot anything You know any malpractice any um, you know inadequate Rating purpose, you know all that stuff all that jargon uh, and also Veteran service organization, they got lawyers. So, you know, maybe the VA, okay, a hey, Debo got Wounded Warrior Project, my fucking goddamn Debo got DAV, VFW. Okay, no, let's, uh, let's, let's look a little hard at this claim. You know, this, that's what it seems like. Because I've seen many veterans, I got a buddy of mine, he was at 90. He submitted his claim, write paperwork, um, you know, everything was good. However, his medical evidence didn't support getting an increase or those secondary VA disabilities that he was trying to get. He actually got all of those secondaries denied as well as he got a decrease to his already service connected disabilities because the medical evidence that he supplied did not establish or maintain him at what he was already currently rated at so if you go on there for an increase you know understand what was the max he was 50 for 50 percent for migraines for some reason you know I, I met him after the fact but for some reason, he thought he'd get 70% or 60%, a little, a little more for migraines. And when he submitted that claim, they, the VA decreased his migraines all the way down to zero. They was like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. First of all, you cannot increase it further than 50. Second of all, the medical evidence that you supply doesn't meet 50. It doesn't meet 30% criteria. It doesn't even meet 10%. So we're just going to put you down to zero. Let you figure that out. And then, you know, he got that. He got a couple other things denied. Um, you know, and some things like switched around. So you, you definitely need to um, have someone in your corner that understands the VA disability claims process. So you're not just putting in shit that's going to get denied, that's going to risk a decrease, that's going to take money away from you. No, it's plus up. It's plus up. Y'all talk about well, it's plus up, baby. 2023, 2024. Doesn't matter what the year is. It's year of the vet. And y'all understand that, right? Right? Fuck out of here with that bullshit. But hey, you know. We're going to be trying to make videos more often. I'm definitely up in the shorts, but you know, uh, between shorts and actual videos, um, y'all be playing games. Y'all be playing games. I see other creators putting out, putting out that motherfucking C bait. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh! And misinformation. But you know, all over here, I tell it how it is. Give y'all straight facts, information, and a little bit of laughter, especially to the IBS motherfucking gang. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey. But until next time, this is motherfucking Devo out, y'all. Always, always stay fucking Gucci with it.